Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these guys right here. These are the Apple AirPods. Um, these are a very special set of headphones made by Apple. Um, they are very expensive. They are very, well, handy. Um, they, they, they've got a bunch of things going for them, and I figured it's about time after I've been carrying them for about two years now, um, <laughs> to actually go ahead and do a freaking review. So, um, let's go on ahead and start off with a size comparison. Here they are against a standard U.S. quarter. And so you can see here, these are not particularly large. Um, here the, we will put a ruler down on the table here so you can get a sense of exactly what we're looking at here. Size-wise, these are not particularly large, and of course, as is tradition for the channel, the Spydeco Delica pocket knife. Yeah, these are not particularly large items right here, but um, they absolutely 100% do the trick. Oh, and then here it is against a standard credit card sort of size. So right here, you can see, yeah, not particularly large. The whole kit and caboodle fits well within the profile of a... Uh, a standard credit card. So anyways, there you go. Next thing, um, I want to comment real quick. Um, there were a lot of people, anytime I post a review of an Apple product or even mention an Apple product, there were a lot of people who are just falling all over themselves to comment, oh, you idiot, you sheep, you fanboy, whatever. Look, um, at some level, yeah, I totally get it. Apple's been doing some really, they, 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 they've been screwing up. Even as somebody who has liked Apple a lot in the past, I'm not the biggest fan of them. However, I think it's important that we think carefully about the, the, the pros and the cons of any given brand and that we not be complete and total fanboys or complete and total haters either. So if the, the entire substance of your comment is, oh my God, Apple, you sheep, expensive, oh, little Android, you don't freaking bother. You're not doing any good for anybody, but if you want to engage seriously with the points, you know, that's a beautiful thing. Sorry, I shouldn't have to say that, but unfortunately, that's the nature of... Some people look at this as like, a, you know, it's their, their football team, right? They're like, oh, rah, rah, rah. No, I don't freaking care. Anyway, so um, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of these very interesting little pods right here. So to start with on the good side, the user experience for pairing these guys is actually really, really nice. Um, because once you've, the moment that you pop these guys open with these in there, uh, uh, any nearby device from Apple will immediately start saying, hey, do you want to connect to these guys? And then after that, they are paired not just to your device, but they're paired to all of your devices, such that if they are on and in your, ear, uh, in your ears, that is, you will be able to see them pop up. You can just select, oh, Nick's AirPods, and then click that. And then whatever device you're on will immediately take over the AirPods and start broadcasting into your ears. This is super, super easy. Um, this is one of the advantages that you have with the AirPods in Apple's ecosystem over some of the other competition. There are lots of really good headphones out there, but if you are using an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac, for instance, it's so very easy to instantly route, without taking the phone out of your pocket, to route the, 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 the sound from your computer into your AirPods rather than from your phone. That's a little detail, but it's a detail that makes it very, very compelling. So that's a nice thing if you're in the ecosystem already. Next thing, the case on these guys, I like a lot. Um, and I like it for a bunch of reasons. Not only does it have a super satisfying latch, it's magnetically based, and so it pops itself open. If you just give it a little bit of, it pops itself open, but if you pull it it shuts itself as well. And so you're at no real risk of this guy unlatching itself. I'm really giving it a heck here, and it's not coming unlatched. I've never once had this come undone in my pocket without my thumb actively doing anything about it. Um, but it is absolutely a smooth latch. It's frankly great in the pocket. It feels like a nice size. It has no sharp edges. And it has survived well being kept in the pocket with my keys, my pen, with a bunch of metal objects for two years. This case is, you know, sure, you can see it's got some patina on it, so to speak. But it's no, not really any worse for the wear. I mean, it's a really, really nicely designed case. The worst thing I can see Say about it is people are like, oh, you must floss a lot. Yeah, my dentist wishes. Um, but nevertheless, kids floss. It's uh, 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 do as I say, not as I do. And I do floss. Anyways, I, I, we're not going into that right now. But either way, a bunch of people were uh, think it's a floss case, but it's a really, really nice case. In terms of things that I have in my pocket on a regular basis, this works pretty damn well. So I like that very, very much. Um, next thing on this guy, oh, uh, I'm sorry, next thing on this guy, battery life on these guys is actually fine. Um, you have probably an hour and change of battery life two and a half years in. Um, uh, you know, this guy, th these are the same ones I've had the whole damn time. And so the battery in them will lose capacity. But even now, uh, you know, I can get through, a, you know, an entire long walk home from work if I want to, listening to music or even on the phone if I want to. And I really don't have a problem. And the thing is, even if I do have a problem, even if I find that I've reached the end, what I can do is take one of them out, put it back in the charging case here, let it charge back up up 
and then keep the other one going, and then five minutes will give me enough boost that I can, you know, put this guy. There are ways that you can extend the life, so to speak, of these guys and not necessarily have that concern. And so the battery life on these guys feels like it's it's roughly fine. The case itself, you just plug into a, uh, unfortunately, a lightning uh, standard uh, cord there, and uh, it'll charge up within, you know, an hour or something like that. And even then, it still gets me about a week before I have to even think about recharging the case. I don't know that I, no, I have run out of juice once on this guy, but it recharged up enough quickly. I don't care. So battery life on these guys was actually surprisingly fine. I figured that would be an Achilles heel, but it's done quite well, so that's good. Next thing, audio quality. Now look, I am a bit of an audiophile. In fact, I work with audio. I work with acoustics. Um, the, the audiophiles in the, the in the agent, or in the, the, the group here, are getting ready to angrily mash their keyboard if I say this sounds fine. Thing is, it does sound fine. It's not amazing. It's not audiophile quality. This does not compare to a dedicated headphone listening rig with an actual headphone amp amplifier and a pair of Sen 650s or something like that. Um, it, no, absolutely, it's not the same thing audio-wise, but you know what? It is more than good enough for your everyday life. You are wearing these guys, in all likelihood, out and about. You're wearing these walking down the street with a bus driving by. You're wearing these sitting on a loud bus. You're wearing this on an airplane walking through an airport. You know, the sound quality that you're getting out of here is better than the, 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 the cheapo Wyatt headphones. Well, cheapo for Apple is like a million dollars or something. Either way, I'm sure it's cheap to them, Wyatt headphones they include with the phone. Um, and it's actually surprisingly fine. Um, I have never had any feeling like, uh, there were definitely times where it's like, wow, well, I wish I had a little more fidelity, but I feel that all the damn time, right? Um, these are absolutely fine for what, you, what you're what you doing and what you need here. So quality-wise, they're good to go. Also, um, you can use these as, as a headphone to talk to somebody, right? You can get on a phone call with these, and it works just fine. And you know what? They work well there, too. You get good microphone pickup. I've never once had anybody complain as I'm wearing these guys. Um, the only time that they can get a little bit more problematic is if you're in a really high-noise environment. Um, if you're, for instance, walking around in an airport or something like that, in that case, people can pick up on other voices a little bit more readily than uh, with some of the more dedicated, like, I have a microphone hanging at, you know, down off of my chest so my mouth is much closer. That's where these get overwhelmed. But for the most part, calls are just beautiful, um, and they work well for that. Next thing, I'll say that this whole affair, uh, the, the, the headphones and these guys are very durable. I cannot count the number of times I have accidentally thrown these guys three or four feet. Usually, it's the case that I'm, you know, taking these guys out, and I, I do something like, you know, I try to get fancy, and I'm like, okay, hold on, and then, you know, ah, uh, butterfingers, and I throw this guy across the pavement, or I take them out of my ears and bumble it, and they, they, they go rolling across the concrete. Um, you can definitely see that they're a little worse for the wear. This guy is definitely taking some some hits on occasion, but you know what? They're still chugging along. They're still doing just fine. Um, there really aren't any broken features or anything like that. I've not had substantial problems with these guys, and so durability-wise, that sounds absolutely good to go for me. Next thing, the isolation on these guys is relatively low. What I mean by that is you put these guys in your ears, um, and you're not hearing... I'm sorry, you're still able to hear a fair amount of what's going on around you. For some people, this is a bad thing, right? If you're working in a crowded office environment, well, you don't have to worry about getting hit by a truck, but you don't want to hear, you know, Karen from accounting next door talking and, you know, they, they, I can understand wanting more isolation, but in actual everyday life, walking around, these have, at least for my ears, a very nice mix of, uh, you know, they block out enough sounds. So, for instance, you can listen to them on a bus, but they're not completely and totally, uh, well... I don't know. They're not letting, uh, they're, they're not blocking everything out. So they're safe to use as you're walking down a street or something like that. So I think that's actually a safety feature at some level. But if you're looking for isolation, this is not the approach. Um, next thing, they have a little feature on here that I didn't think was going to be as crucial as it is, but it kind of is. If you're wearing both of these guys, if you're walking around wearing these and then you take one of them out, they actually have a sensor here. Um, the, these two sensors detect when they are placed in your ear. Um, and when you place, when you take one out of your ear, when you take one of the two out, it automatically pauses the music. Now, this is one of those design features that is just a good idea because it takes something that we already intuitively do. If you're talking to somebody, you take an earbud out of your uh, ear and then it just reads, oh, it's out of the ear. Well, I guess I should pause the music. Then when you put it back in, it restarts things. That is just a brilliant design move because it's like something that you would already want to be having happening. It's just happening easily. Um, and so that's a great thing. The only weirdness with that is that if you happen to be holding it like this so that both of these senses are covered, it's going to think it's back in your ear and restart the music. So you end up holding them, you know, something more like this. You know, I got pretty good at just like, you know, going about my day. If I'm signing for a package or something like that, makes it makes it easy enough. Then finally, on the good side, these are super convenient because these are completely wireless. I have this little guy in 
in my pocket. When I want to listen to music, I pop this guy out and I put these guys in my ears. At that point, I don't have any wires hanging off of me. And I don't really have problems with, you know, running out of a Bluetooth range or anything like that. I can put these guys, I can leave my phone right here and I can probably go to the other damn side of my apartment and have a really good shot of still being able to hear just fine. Um, and being able to con carry on a conversation. I, I can be bent over. I, and these stay in my ears relatively well, although that's pretty ear specific. So you'll want to make sure that that's the case for you as well. But these are just so damn convenient relative to having to have your phone on you all the time as you're talking, relative to having something, you know, cords hanging off of you. These are just really good. And even relative to like the Beats X where you had that thing, you know, looped around your neck. Oh, this is just nice. And so, um, and they're unobtrusive. People, you know, you look a little like a douchebag with these things hanging at your ears. But that's because, well, you're a bit of a douchebag. It's okay, though. You got to get used to that, right? Um, and so it, 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 the convenience of complete wirelessness is a beautiful thing. And to me, all of that is the good. Um, it is convenient uh, with wirelessness. And you can do one or two of them at a time. That's totally fine. You can, by the way, that's an important detail. You can use only one of them. Time. It's not obtrusive. Um, it pauses the music when you take one of them out. The, there is enough sound leaking in that it's safe to wear them around. Um, they're reasonably durable. They've got good talkability, um, meaning they work well for calls. Good audio quality. Good enough audio quality. We'll put it that way. Battery life is fine. They've got a stellar case, and the pairing experience is great. On the great side, though, to me, is that they just work. Um, seriously. Um, this is something that Apple used to do really well. They used to have products that just worked. Um, where it was just like, wow, that's really intuitive. That's just perfectly functional. This is not, unfortunately, how Apple works these days. That's been, they've drifted away from that. But this is the least I've thought about an Apple product in many years. I've carried these every day for the last few years or two years or so, if not more. Um, and you know what? I don't think about them very often because I carry them, I take them out, I put them, and I use them every damn day. I charge them, but I just don't care because every time I put them in my ears, by and large, the phone connects to them, everything works fine, then I put them back and I don't care, and then I take them out, put them in. Like, there were occasionally software bugs, but that's just because Apple's software quality is going to heck, but the units themselves do amazing work. I just don't care about them. They are boring, and that is the very best thing that a tool can be, is absolutely 100% boring. And so to me, that is the great, is that these are a tool that just work. They just work beautifully, and there is absolutely not a damn bit of problem with them in that domain. So um, on the bad side, one thing to note is that anytime you go to something that is Bluetooth only, you're going to have some downsides. For instance, if you're trying to watch the in-flight entertainment, you're going to have a bad time. The magnets on these guys, um, I'm sorry, that, that, that I should have put a bigger pause there. Um, so, you know, you, you need to keep in mind that Bluetooth only is a thing. Next thing, the magnets on these guys are a problem in a couple of ways. You can see that they do pick up particulate. You can see that there are areas here, and this doesn't wipe off necessarily, but you'll get little iron shavings and things like that um, that kind of attach to this magnetic area. One other thing to note is because these have magnets, these will demagnetize hotel room key cards that are using magnetic cards rather than a chip reader. So that is something you want to keep in mind, and that is the biggest downside to having a magnetic anything in your pocket there. Um, next thing, there is that poor isolation. These are not a great choice on a plane ride, for instance. Um, if you're sitting on a plane, you're going to have a loud time uh, because it, they're not going to block out much of the sound. That's something to consider. The world around you is audible. That's a good thing for walking, but not a, such a good thing if you're sitting on the bus or in the office. Next thing, um, I've noticed that unfortunately the tap commands, like the tap tap to play, tap tap to pause, um, don't seem to be super well supported by iOS. Um, most specifically like with YouTube, if you were playing a YouTube video, you tap tap to pause it and then you tap tap to play again. In the latest versions, it is just as likely to start the YouTube video again as it is to start a random song that you were listening to last. And that's, um, well, that's a sign that their code quality is deteriorating. Not so much about the AirPods, but it is something to keep in mind. Next thing, um, unfortunately, and this is the case with pretty much any Bluetooth setup, but it's something to keep in mind. If you use a lot of speech to text, where you are talking to your phone and it's writing it down as you text it, um, this doesn't work as well because you hit the button and then it needs to talk to your AirPods and then you talk and then it puts it down. But there's a big lag that's introduced there relative to just using the on-phone microphone. And so very often, if I'm doing a lot of that, I will actually take these out of my ears and talk directly to the phone just for the decrease in latency. Um, that's not amazing, but, you know, that's the nature of Bluetooth, and that's something to keep in mind. Next thing, because these have a limited battery life, um, they are not amazing for long-duration listening. So if you are planning to put these guys in your ears and wear them all damn day without any pause to charge, that's 
not going to be great. It only takes 20 minutes or so to, you know, recharge them. So it's generally not an issue. Um, but if you're planning to listen for an entire eight hour plane flight, this isn't going to do the trick for you. You need something a little bit more. Next thing, these are very deeply embedded in the iOS and Apple ecosystem. Um, there is a way to pair these guys with other devices, with an Android phone, for instance, or with a, a, a PC computer. I won't say that I've tried it because I, well, I haven't. I don't have a device to try it with. However, it's, it's much more awkward if you read the mail. So if you're outside of the Apple ecosystem, I don't know that I recommend these guys because you can probably find something that's a little bit better designed to work well with Android, to work well, not that these wouldn't, but um, this is really an Apple product and you don't want to do this unless you're already in their ecosystem. For me, at least, as I said, it's better to be in their ecosystem than not right now. Linux soon. Um, but anyways, uh, d d d d d for now, I, uh, d you should probably only do these if you're an Apple person already. Then finally, on the bad side, this has a proprietary cable. This is using the Lightning cable standard rather than USB-C or micro USB or any of the other non-proprietary standards out there. Apple has been all in on Lightning for years. They are moving very quickly towards a USB-C sort of adapter. Um, and I hope desperately that, um, well, as they finally move the phone over, damn it, um, they will also move these over, but still. That's not something I particularly love. Um, and, and new versions do charge wirelessly, which is a nice thing, but still. Um, there's an increase in complexity anytime you need a proprietary cable for your life. And that's yet another reason why you probably don't want to do these if you're not already in the Apple system. So there you go. Um, and so, uh, to me at least, that's what's bad, is that they're using a proprietary charging cable here. Um, there is, uh, and you can get a wireless charging one, but they're not all wireless charging. Um, they're very deeply embedded in the Apple ecosystem, so they're probably not a great idea if you're not an Apple person. Person. Um, they're not great for long duration listening. Bluetooth just doesn't work as well uh, with speech to text. Um, tap to do whatever isn't that well working. It's not great for isolation. Magnets pick up particulate and uh, the the magnetized room keys. And uh, Bluetooth does have downsides in a world where headphone jacks are still a thing. Damn it, Apple make them a thing. Anyways, on the ugly front, there are a couple of ugly issues. Um, first off, the douche factor. Um, People have now, since I initially started wearing these guys, people have figured out what these are. It's like, oh, those are those Apple headphones, and enough people have them that it's no longer just, you're not looking around like you've got a pair of cigarettes, you know, hanging out of your ears. You're not looking like a total cyber douche the whole time you're wearing them, but it's definitely still a factor. I'm okay with being a little bit of a douchebag, right? That's, that's the nature of my existence, but unfortunately, these are still marked. A lot of people are used to headphones, not as many people are used to these, so that's something to keep in mind. But the other thing is they also bring out the douches, um, as we'll probably see see in the comment thread. We're going to get a whole bunch of people, oh my god, Apple sucks. Are you wearing all your fancy AirPods with your virtue signal? I don't know what they're going to go after, but they, 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 you see that they, 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 there are people who will see these and then just give you crap just because you're an Apple sheep. Oh my god. Um, and you'll see the comments below full of people who didn't watch this far into the video and it just assumed that I, I'm praising Apple blindly and not saying anything uh, negative about it. Apple is absolutely ugly, but the people who are anti-Apple without even thinking twice about what's going on in the content, that's ugly is still. So, uh, jokes on them. Um, next thing, these guys are very expensive. Speaking of Apple being ugly, these are stupidly expensive. The base model um, is, and we're now up to the AirPods too. The major difference is they do a Siri, you know, push the, 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 the double tap for Siri thing, or I'm sorry, hey Siri support. Um, but it's 160 bucks for the base model of these, which is a lot of money. If you want to use the wireless charging case, you're at 199 bucks, and if you want to upgrade to a wireless case, you're at 80 bucks alone. The Apple tax is in full swing here, and now there, by the way, are the AirPods Pro. I'm gonna check those out just because I'm. A gear reviewer, and that seems like a thing I should do, but you are paying for the Apple tax. These would not be as expensive from any other company, um, but Apple is Apple, and they will shaft you if you have an opportunity, and this is an opportunity. So I'm not a big fan on that. Um, we see so many of the, the these instances of Apple just sticking it to us, and honestly, I think, you know, if the wireless case was 160, the regular ones were 125, that would be a lot more reasonable. One other issue that's kind of Apple just sticking it to us is that, unfortunately, the Apple Care that you have for your phone, if you've done that, doesn't cover the AirPod. So if you lose an AirPod, you're paying 60 bucks for it. Or if one of them stops working out of warranty, that's not great. They're offering Apple Care now on the AirPods themselves, which, guys, shoot me, but still, it's a thing. Um, it's just too expensive. They're, 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 they're too proud of these, and although they should be proud of them, they shouldn't be this damn proud. So there's that. And then finally, the biggest issue and the biggest difference you'll notice on mine relative to most people's is that most people have a little mesh right here. I did have a little mesh right there. 
The problem is, this is something you stick in your ears. And after a while, that mesh gets saturated with earwax. And when you have something that is now opaque to sound because it's saturated with earwax and you cannot remove it to clean it, then guess what happens? You stop being able to hear. And so after a certain point, I actually went in there and I removed that mesh entirely. Um, and, you know, it didn't really affect it. Well, it brought the sound quality way back because it was no longer completely obstructed. And there were ways that you can clean it with like isopro but look guys if you're gonna add a mesh in there that's designed to trap wax you need to allow me a way to clean that mesh this is a dumb decision like why are you making me why are you putting something in there to, that, that helps to trap stuff that you can't clean out it's bad it's a stupid stupid idea so i ended up carefully removing those when it got to a point where it was problematic and that definitely got me another couple of years but i'm just not a big fan of that decision if you're gonna do something like that make it cleanable make it removable so you can take it out clean it out and then put it back in afterwards just a really really dumb call in that in my estimation if you're going to have a mesh to trap wax you need to give us a way to clean that wax out of there or allow us to do just a you know take it to the apple store and they'll swap the mesh for you i don't freaking care but they need to have an approach for this and it's really ugly that they don't and so those are the ugly things is that they have a, a pot that's designed to trap things and you can't untrap them you have no apple care or the apple care on the phone doesn't cover the airpods they're very very expensive really stupidly so um and they make you look like a douche and they make other people look like douchebags because they're going to come after you too just because you're you know wearing whatever you know one kind of tool here um a final conclusion I have very, very strongly mixed feelings about anything Apple these days, because Apple is angering me more than they're making me like them. And the AirPods are very, very weird. They are, they, they, there's a lot of things I dislike here. They're too damn proprietary. See my rant on complexity for more about all of those issues. Um, Bluetooth has its downsides. They're not noise-canceling at all. They're douchey. They attract douches who point things out. Oh, Apple. Um, they, 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 they take a part, uh, and they have a part that needs cleaning, and they've made it uncleanable, and like I said, they're just too damned expensive. And the other thing is you can get earbuds that sound just as good for cheaper. If you are just looking to have great sound, you can do that much better with all sorts of in-ear monitors, those kinds of things that you will pay much less for, especially relative like the AirPods Pro, which are getting to be like 300 bucks now with all the Apple Care and all that. It's ridiculous. And so you can get better earbuds cheaper than that. I'm wired, even wireless. You have to be in the Apple ecosystem for these to make any sense. But the thing is, if you are, these offer a lot of joy because they're easy to pair. They're easy to carry. They've got plenty of staying power in terms of battery life. I've got good audio quality. They've had good durability for me, a nice interface, and frankly, the convenience of them. Just the factor of throwing this in my pocket, taking them out of my ears, putting them in my head, and then listening to music, taking them out, and not even thinking about it again, it's second to none. I really wish that some of Apple's ugly wasn't present here, that the connectors were standards, maintenance was easier, the price wasn't hilarious. But at the same time, as a person who has been an Apple person since the days of PowerPC, since the days before OS X, this is probably the most Apple-like product that has happened in years. I mean, it used to be that Apple products were just effective tools that you didn't have to worry as much about. Apple has changed. They are not in a good place right now. Um, they have gotten too big and they are failing. And that's ugly. And I don't like, well, they're not failing. They're massively successful, but they're leaving behind a lot of their customers. I'm not an Apple fan right now, particularly. Um, but the thing is, this is one of those products that makes me remember why I used to be an Apple fan. This is a case of design that just works. It has a beautiful design in and of itself. It has a, a amazing easing of use. Easing of use, that is ease of use. It's frictionless. Um, it's boring. Uh, whoever led the AirPods team should be leading every team at Apple right now because this is the best thing they have done in years. I like these products more than I have liked anything I have bought from Apple in a while. This is the only thing that hasn't really felt like that mixed of a bag. Sure, it's got things I dislike. The damn the mesh thing was stupid, but my feelings on these are overwhelmingly positive. Even though they're shafting us in price, even though all of those ugly things, these are such a damn good tool for my everyday life that I really, I'm okay with it. Um, this is a product that has been a win for Apple. Um, all of the other stuff I've tried has had a lot of downsides, and this one is mostly just a win. There's downsides, but it's just really, really good. And so for me, even though there were lots of things I dislike here, and there are even more things I dislike about Apple, these are such a damn good tool for my everyday life. These are something that I would absolutely be very sad if they disappeared from the market and from my life, um, that I can't help but call them a gem. Even though there's something that drives me a little nuts 
the, 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 more in the the, the the moral sense, more in the, oh my God, why am I deep in this walled garden sense? They are amazing. They are the best product that Apple has put out in a long time. And they are good enough that I'm going to fork out more money for the pro version. Because you know what? They've had two years to learn from this. Hopefully the new ones will be even better. Well, maybe they won't be. We'll find out. Who knows with Apple these days? But anyways, these are great headphones. I'm very, very happy to use them. And they have been a great tool for me. And if you're looking for something like this, they might be a great tool for you. Keep an eye out for the pro review at a certain point. Hopefully it'll be sooner than two years. But mostly, I hope this has been interesting and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.